However, we don't say, as some religions, that God's love is unconditional. No, God's love is conditional. God loves those who are good and who obey Him and who follow His guidance. And God hates those, although God does not usually in the Qur'an use that term hate. Usually you find the Qur'an says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْ which means very God does not love al fasikin al dhalimin meaning the wrongdoers, the evildoers. So even in the Qur'an, the emphasis is more often on the fact that God does not love people who do wicked things. Yes, God is compassionate, God is merciful. And that extends to all the creatures. But again, similarly, it is not an absolute unconditional attribute. God is also just. He is also shadid al-iqab, which means he is the severe in punishment. So, in Islam, the Qur'an teaches us that God has many attributes. God has many names. God has many qualities. It's also interesting that <clears throat> when atheists raise this topic of the problem of evil, it's a strangely self-contradicting assertion from their own point of view. Let's think about this. Atheists by and large, perhaps not all of them, but I still probably have to meet an atheist who doesn't believe in the theory of evolution. In fact, for atheists, the theory of evolution for them is one of the strongest arguments that they use to rationalize that we don't need a creator. We have sufficient explanation from natural causes to explain the wide variety of life that we find on our planet. Of course, it's, it's worth noting that evolution or the process of evolution does nothing to be able to explain the fine-tuning of the universe. It does nothing to explain the alternation of the night and the day, the distance of the earth from the sun, the exact composition of the gases in our atmosphere, the chemical properties of water, the various forces that operate within the universe within such a fine degree that it would be very strange to imagine how such precision could be a product of random events. So evolution doesn't do anything to explain those things. It can't. However, still atheists, for them, the theory of evolution is a strong argument that they use in order to try and show that God is at least not as necessary as believers think He is. However, if you believe in the theory of evolution, then you must also believe that human beings are just a product of random mutation of DNA that is evolved through natural selection. And the question here is, as an atheist, where do you get the idea of evil from in the first place? Because since we human beings are merely animals, perhaps slightly sophisticated animals or advanced animals, but the same, just the same, we are just animals, and therefore we are just a product of the natural causes. It's very beneficial to be able to highlight this through a specific example. Beeping. It's good to highlight this through a specific example. The specific example I'd like to give, for example, is you know, you just watch any uh, documentary 
okay, about a nature program of one animal fighting and killing and eating another. So let's take the herds of wildebeest in the Masai Mara Park in, that goes between, or the Serengeti, as it's called, between Tanzania and Kenya. And these wildebeest migrate, and one of the things, I'm sure you've probably seen it, there comes a time when they cross a certain river and the crocodiles know that it's time, right, for these wildebeest to cross, and they're just waiting there to, you know, it's just dinner time, right? Now, you know, we don't sit there and look at the crocodiles and say, oh my God, look at that evil crocodile eating that wildebeest. He's so evil and wicked. You might think that because a crocodile is a sort of bit slimy and reptilian and a wildebeest is a mammal, but, you know, that would, you know, that's ridiculous. They're just doing what crocodiles do. When a lion jumps on a helpless little gazelle and rips its throat open with blood spewing everywhere, you don't say, what a wicked lion. The lion is just doing what the lion does. When the male shark forces itself upon the female shark, it basically rapes the female shark. Well, we don't call it rape. We don't consider it to be evil. That's just what sharks do. So here is my question. Where does evil come in if we are just evolved? Surely human beings are just doing whatever human beings have evolved to do. So if we gas six million Jews, we slaughter each other in Rwanda, we rape, we murder, we steal, we're just doing what human beings do. We've evolved to do that. So using the argument of evil is hypocrisy from the point of view of the atheist, because in reality... There is no morality, there is no such thing as good and evil. If you are truly an atheist and you believe in evolution, morality is an artificial construct. But the fact that the atheist relies in their argumentation on the existence of the problem of evil, and they know it is so emotive, they can appeal to something deep-rooted inside the human being, actually proves that there must be a God. Because from where does this idea that there is something evil come from? It must come from some transcendent anchor, transcendental anchor. It has to come from some place other than ourselves. Because if it doesn't, then we would have to agree that there is no such thing as objective evil. There can only be subjective evil. There can only be subjective evil. What I mean by that is there is nothing really that is absolutely evil always and forever. Yeah? Because if evil is merely a product of our circumstance, and so evil would be either it's evil because most people in society happen happen to consider it to be evil, right? Or people perceive it to be harmful, non-beneficial or whatever. These are the causes, but since society changes, those reasons change. So it is not objectively evil. Let's take a scenario, for example. 